Hi, welcome to Yoga Teachers Masterclass. I'm Paula Mitten and today our expert speaker is David Garrig. Um, David is an international yoga teacher. Um, he is one of just a small group of Ashtanga teachers who's been uh, certified by Sri K. Patabi Joyce, who's the founder of Ashtanga Yoga. Uh, David now travels the world extensively teaching workshops, retreats and in-depth studies. And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome him on the masterclass today. So thanks, uh, David, for taking the time out of your day. Well, thank you. Um, my pleasure. <laughs> so can you start just by um, telling us a little bit about yourself for those who aren't familiar with you? Um, yeah, well, I'm uh, from Seattle, an American from um, Seattle, Washington. And um, uh, I'm 57 years old and been doing yoga for since I was uh, 16 and um, so for decades now um, consistently uh, and um, in I took it up kind of formally in 1993 or, uh, or no excuse me 1991 but I found Ashtanga in 1993 and um, I started teaching in 1997 and have never stopped since then and it's been my full-time occupation and um and passion uh so and i um yeah that's pretty much i do, devote almost everything to um practicing and teaching yoga and i have my uh, wonderful partner joy who's a filmmaker and she uh she helps me with uh, my videos and all my offerings um uh, online and everything and then i also and we are, our family is completed by our little kitty this is funny <laughs> he's our sidekick and is often on our adventures with us yeah so ah, fantastic um so clearly you've been you've had a a regular daily practice for a very long time um can you talk a bit about that, the importance of a daily personal practice and how you use that, you know, you draw from your own practice to teach other people? Yeah, um, and for me, I've, I've gone through different um, kind of arcs with that, with like how important my practice is in terms of my teaching, because I see them as, um, well, essential to each other. And, um, and also that I, for me, I think that life, my life is art, and that the art for me is in those two things, that, that practice is its own art, like in a deep art, like, and so is teaching. And so, um, and so, and I need both of those to kind of like, to feel that expression of art and um uh and of uh, just there's a something that i want to manifest in the world uh and it, it comes through practicing and it comes through teaching and they they complement each other and like and i can't one without the other is is unimaginable and and they they're very different um too it like because the practice part is uh internal and very individual and personal and solitary and um and so it's feeding something or discovery is happening exploration and discovery that uh is kind of the whole substance of what i'll teach right and so without that withdrawal time and that um self time uh, on the mat working and um, exploring then I, I have nothing to offer um, right. teaching wise but then on the other hand with just practicing would be also nothing without being able to share it and um, and put it out there and have other people benefit from it and um, turning people on to the, the same process of withdrawing within themselves and and you know, striking gold with their vision of of what they want to manifest in their in the world, and so to me, they're they just go together, and and like, and I've tried to 
um, I've tried more actually teaching more without practicing, you know, as I, as you gain experience and everything, it's kind of, it's a possible thing to do where you would leave practice behind more because, because you're teaching, you know, but, but for me, I don't, I, that's not optimal. Like, because of this art part that, that's, that practice is such a, it's, um, it's, it's just so uh, key to, central to it all. And it's not, you never stop growing in it. Like there's never a point where now I've practiced enough and I've learned everything and I'm, it, it's an, it's, it's endless. And it's the way that, you, that I, um, I, ha I have to, just like I can't ask other people to practice be, because um, there's a lot of hardship and challenge involved in practicing. And so you, so we can't, as teachers, we can't leave that behind and think that somehow because we're serving others that that, that replaces that the own, you know, looking in and seeing our shadow and the things that we need to keep growing and um, to keep learning, you know, so. And I think it happens, right, to a lot of teachers when they get to a certain point. Uh, like they they throw themselves into the teaching and then suddenly they've lost their practice yeah yeah and even if it feels like it's for a good cause and you're like a lot of demands are on your time or it's still to me that's not worth it like um if for anyone for you or for your students um and and it's it's quite extraordinary how the learning continues like and and that the, like there can be plateaus that can feel long, but then also like oh, I've been doing it so long. Oh my God, it's crazy! It's, it's amazing actually. But and I'm learning more than I ever. I mean, yes. about myself, about the postures, about every, and about teaching, and um, and so that. And that's one of the the best things about it, actually, is the fact that we do get to keep learning and growing, and um, it, and that it, it will deliver that if you keep stay true and keep really consistent and long term with your practice. It it just keeps offering you more insight and knowledge about who you are and how to um, be part of the world and. Um, and make the kind of, you know, we all have our vision of how the world ought to be or how, how it can be a better place or how it can evolve. And through yoga, I've been able to, feel, I feel like I make a difference for, and I can um, actually have some impact, you know. And right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think as well, uh, when you say like it's an exploration, sometimes I feel like uh, a lot of students and teachers think that their home practice has to be a, a particular, like a certain structure, um, where it's for, like, I imagine it, I mean, for me, um, it's more an exploration, like you say, that, and it changes. What, what does your home practice look like? You know, is there a, a set rule that home practice has to look like? Yeah, yeah, well, and look, well, all of the structures, you know, like Ashtangas, um, at least there's, uh, it, it appears on paper to have a lot of structure, like the series and you do it every day, um, six days a week and, and all this. Um, and, but, but in actuality, it's very um, flexible and it's meant to be customized and personalized and um, and it's it's a template like any structure that's that you by by doing it um, kind of I don't know strictly or like um, as it's written you stand to gain when you're not experienced like because yeah it's because it gives you this discipline and it gives you this health healthy sample uh, or help healthy representative of of technique it teaches you about yoga and and so it makes sense that you 
do primary series every day. And you, you do these things and you be, you stick to it to the best of, as you can. Mm -hmm. But with, with time and experience, you get the techniques, you understand, you become skilled and you be able to become more um, creative mm -hmm. and more um, in tune with what is appropriate or what is suitable for you at a given time or a given day or, and, um, and then you, it, it it's, can look very different um, it, depending on what's happening and, and also different factors of like getting older or um, other things like when I'm traveling, say, yes. uh, I, I can't be the same as when I'm at home and I, I'm really anchored in there. That, and so, but I'm able to adapt and, um, and, use the techniques for, to my advantage, you know, and, um, and benefit from the structure without being unnecessarily bound up by it or um, constricted. You know? Great. So, yeah. And that's a dance though, because you want, because I respect the, the system or the, and the structure, yeah. but, but I also don't ever, I never think that it's that respecting it means that you're supposed to like follow every series for your whole life. And that if you don't somehow you're not doing Ashtanga or like that, that's kind of like just very unrealistic and not soulful, not, um, not helpful when, when the system is supposed to help you. Right. Yeah. And so, but you know, you, you can also get, um, complacent or just kind of go into patterns of doing what you like and um, avoiding difficulty and things and but so so you're in a dance with structure right where you're respecting it but at the same time you're playful and creative and just trying to um, use it to its best advantage yes yes great um, so yeah, I have been following your, uh, Asana Kitchen on YouTube. Um, I love the, the videos for anyone who hasn't watched it. You need to, to go and watch it. It's like all, um, techniques and, you know, alignment, right? And, and, um, yeah, I, I just wonder if you can talk a little bit about that and how, is it possible as a teacher to integrate that into classes or how do you go about offering that kind of technique? Do you do it in workshops? What's the best way to bring that into your teaching? It's, yeah, that was an interesting question that you brought up because it's not, it's challenging, I think. And I think one, one thing that's essential is that it doesn't really happen by surprise to the student, right? <laughs> that like they, like if they think they're coming in and they're going to flow or something, and then you bust out the workshop where you break <laughs> down a pose, then that it's not likely to be received that well. Right. Mm -hmm. So kind of have to be clear, like, well, what kind of class is this? And then, and, um, and go appropriately. And, um, and it is, it's, it's a very, um, it's a challenge because, um, because they're so different in a way, the, the flow aspect versus like really breaking things down. And, yeah. and me, I, I feel like often a fair amount of breakdown is necessary to, to convey the, the inf information that becomes really useful to somebody. Yeah. And so... And so that can mean like a half an hour on a few transitions or something, which is, I mean, you have to be in the right frame of mind for that. And, and so workshops, I think, are good where the title of the class and the objective is clearly identified so mm -hmm. that the person signs up because they know that we're going to work on the transitions of Surya Namaskar yeah. or something like that. And um, versus the lead primary, where we're going to do the whole 90 minutes in sweat and flow. Mm -hmm. and, um, and definitely more the, 
I place a lot of value on the Asana Kitchen and the learning, um, that type of learning environment that I provide on that. Um, and I, tr I use that in my workshops. And like when I do, um, I do like Mysore intensives. I could do it in India every year in um, Kovalam in February. And mm -hmm. it's like for one month. And it has daily Mysore where, uh, you know, you come in, everybody does their, their practice. Um, but then I have these supplemental classes where we look at things in detail. And then I get people to do those things individually in the Mysore class. Mm -hmm. And um, and to me, I it, I like that combination. I like so that you you you're working with with um, with heat and tapas and flow, but then you're also got technique. So you so it's not just repetition, just for its own sake. But you're really thinking of what you're doing and how to um, develop it. it yeah. and that and so so finding that balance is, is hard. And as a teacher, finding like how to get the setting right and the right proportion. It's, a, it, it's an art. And, yeah. um, and it does matter like what you value as a teacher, right? Like you, um, so you have to somehow get creative and make it, because that's what I've tried to do is make it so that what I value is represented. And, um, and it's, it's, it's taken a, a long time to hone that in and to even um, set up the, the conditions for that, um, mm -hmm. like the type of workshop and, and stuff. And, and I do feel that to a certain degree, you have to let go of, um, I don't know, I do it sort of on my terms and I hope that it works out, that like it has an audience and that people will want to learn from me. Mm -hmm. But I also, there's a certain tr trueness that I, I want. Like I, I feel like I really want to convey these things about practice and I'm gonna make sure that I set up the conditions for that and hope that there's a receptivity to that. You know, and it's worked out so far, but yeah, so. Yeah, and I mean, it's clear that it's all, you know, it all comes from your lifetime of experience on the mat where you've figured things out, you know, by going through the process and then you're offering it to your students. It's the, the, the years of knowledge that you've got that then you're offering out there, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, uh, just to, to finish up, um, you have a, a free gift to offer to anyone who wants to opt in, right? Yeah, so, okay, Th that, that's an amazing um, video course. And it's, um, the, the theme is learning to do head, um, shirshasana, head balance. Um, and it takes you through all the phases of setting up the foundation and coming up and the different stages of coming up and then being up in the pose. But it's way, it's even much more than that because it's, it's really about inversions and, um, and the art of going upside down. And so, and about building strength and upper body strength and, um, and bringing that attention to that really important um, part of the practice. Like in Ashtanga, we, that's the finishing postures. And, um, and part of my platform is that I feel like those are becoming a lost art, like that because people are spending very little time on those postures. And, mm -hmm. but those are some of the most valuable and as, um, and as a Hatha yoga technology. And, and so that, if that video course, that gift will um, really give you a boost in that um, department. Yes, yeah, and you're right, it is lost. A lot of students don't, you know, they don't even get to experience, it's kind of rushed through or not, not thought at all, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah so that is amazing. Yeah. And with um, headstand, it, we, be, we make it a black or white thing. It's like, I either can do it or I can't. And, um, and this course will show you that there's so many possibilities that you, you can work on, whether you can come up in it or not, or, 
and different ways of working on coming up and things and so great yeah. good stuff so anyone who wants to um avail of that uh gift there's a link right beside the video so you can just click on the link um and you'll be able to access that um so i want to say a massive thank you david for taking the time out of your day to speak to us it's been uh so informative and I could talk to you all day <laughs> um, but um, and a, a huge thank you to everybody who's watched the interview um, remember to if you're watching the interview to uh, tune in again tomorrow um, we have different experts every day speaking about something different in relation to the yoga practice but for now I want to say thanks again to David and thank you for watching bye-bye namaste namaste